Hey guys, welcome to Reddit Brew. Today, I will be reading in the r slash entitled people subreddit. So let's jump into it. Woman at church says I'll be sent to hell because of my colored hair. I was hoping that I'd never have a story for this thing, but here we are. Minor context is that my family is Catholic, and even though I'm not really practicing personally, I still attend church with my mother and aunt on occasion. I also have purple and blue dyed hair and a short pixie cut. This is where the issue began. At the church coffee service after mass, an older woman approached my mother aunt and I. Her own hair was long, almost halfway down her back, and gray. She was talking with my aunt and then looked at me. I've been around religious people long enough to know the look. That look they have when they're thinking about how to word that they believe they're better than you or that you're not up to their standards. She keeps eyeing my hair, which I didn't really care about since it happens all the time. Then she starts talking. Oh, honey, did you not know about this church's dress code? Dress code? Yes. That women are supposed to dress properly for mass and other church events. I was wearing a nice dress shirt and skirt, like most of the other women there. The only thing different about me was my hair. We've been attending this church for decades. There's no dress code here. There most certainly is. And I'm positive that hair is not allowed. What? That's ridiculous. Her hair is just fine. Father was just complimenting it a few minutes ago. Lion is a sin, dear. And so is your daughter dyeing her hair such unnatural colors. She just glared at me like she was expecting my hair to suddenly fade into my natural dirty blonde and grow out. We were all shocked by this woman. Hey, don't call my mom a liar. Father did say he liked my hair. Don't speak up at me like that, girl. I'm your elder. So have some respect. No, I don't respect people that insult my family and judge my appearance. I'm just giving you a proper warning. Ruining your body that way is a one-way ticket to hell. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to speak with the father about enforcing the dress code. So she walked off. Nothing dramatic, nobody raised their voice, no cops were called. Just an obnoxious bitch being obnoxious. I don't think I'll be returning to mass for a bit. Oh, hell no, pun intended. OP, go back to church. Go there and don't change a damn thing. In fact, dye your hair an even brighter color and march on in there with confidence. Nothing irks an entitled church lady more than non-compliant young folk. Better yet, offer to assist in mass and she'll be forced to look at you. Ah, I'm a terrible person. Entitled coworker who thinks he's the shit. A couple months ago, we hired an analyst who thinks he's the shit. Let's call him POS going forward. Granted, he recently graduated from a fancy school and managed to hold on to a job for a year before coming over to us. At our company, we love hiring people who look good on paper, can present themselves, and can sell themselves like used car salesmen. The problem with these hires is that they can't work for shit, so they lean heavily on others to get their work done. A lot of the time, it's through manipulation, and the rest of it, it's exploitative. Since this new POS is at the lower end of the totem pole, he still needs to produce some results. But instead of getting the work done himself, he loves working smarter by managing his way out. Most despicably, he amplifies his accomplishments by managing upwards. He's an analyst, so he's higher than clerks. But he's not management. He thinks he's management though, and has been pawning off his own work to clerks. Lately, his favorite pastime has been bowing to the higher powers and looking down upon those who he thinks are weak or inferior. He takes credit for work others do for him and preaches to the higher ups his false narratives. I'm a manager in this company in an adjacent department and I work my ass off day in, day out with the inferiors, delivering good work and on-time services. My team works seamlessly together. However, being so close to the drama, which is essentially only a few cubicles over, I often hear the rumbles. 
Because I keep my head down and get work done day in and out without much of any flashiness, POS never bothered learning my name or title. Just to give you an idea of how insignificant I am to him, I would say good morning when we pass in the hall and he would smugly look ahead without acknowledgement. Little does he know, his day will soon come. Fast forward a few weeks and most people around him have caught on that he's using them for their good nature. So everyone's now too busy to help. POS could have rolled up his sleeve and started working harder, but true to his entitled nature, he decided to do what he does best. The first time POS came to my desk to help him out with Excel formulas, I did. I don't think he learned much of what I showed him though, because he kept coming back. One day he came to my desk and he said he doesn't know how to create a management dashboard using Power BI and MS Query. So he sent me all the supporting emails and backups and told me it's due by 5 p.m. So it would be great if I can complete it by 2 p.m. Since I am management, I do have access to these databases and the relevant tables, but he didn't bother checking if I did. Nevertheless, I was so shocked I didn't say anything. I could hear the buzzing at the cubicles though, as the ladies overheard the interaction, and I can only assume they are getting their popcorns ready for 2 p.m. At this point, he knows my email address, but I've never sent him any emails, so he hasn't seen my email signature slash title. 2 p.m. comes around and he's like, where's that management dashboard I need by 2 p.m.? You mean the one you're preparing for director Bob? Yes, I need that right away. Where's it at? Oh, I see. Let's chat again at 4 p.m. and see where things are at. Just make sure it looks nice and polished. And he leaves. I happen to have an appointment that evening, so I decided to leave early, not giving a single thought about POS. From my phone, I could see the email start coming through closer to 5 p.m. POS is panicking. Next morning, POS came by my desk and lectured me about how I know nothing of team spirit and I lack teamwork. I made him miss his deadline and even though I'm unreliable, I can make it up by sending him the work I promised I would help him with. Sure. My next email was to him, Director Bob, and Director of HR, outlining how POS has been offloading work to everyone around him, and even to me, and that POS has sent me some material that is fairly confidential in nature, which I do not believe I should have access to, and that I do not believe he possesses the qualities to be a good fit with our organization. POS was gone by noon that day. He didn't make it past probation. And a little while later, I heard that his one year experience prior to joining us was a job he got through connections and that he probably did practically nothing there. That was exquisite OP. When revenge is done so tactfully and with such poise, it makes my petty soul so happy. The one such as this where the entitled one metaphorically hangs thyself and the one taking revenge needs to do nothing other than give the entitled one enough rope are the best. I guarantee POS only looked good on paper because he got someone else to write his resume. He is nothing more than a polished turd. And sadly though, people like this never change and will always use people like pawns in their game. And it's a cycle that will never end. So just do your due diligence when you come across people like this to try and expose them for what they truly are or just flat out ignore them. But anyways, that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed those two Entitled People stories. And I also wanted to let you guys know that I made a second channel. A few of you were asking me to do Ask Reddit stuff, but I know that's not everyone's cup of tea, so I didn't want to put it on here. But if you do like Ask Reddit stuff, I'll link my channel now, as well as in the pinned comment below, and you can check it out if you want. Please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do and I will see you in the next Reddit story. Bye!